So, you know how to paint metallics, but what about power weapons? Next speaking, and welcome to this video. Right time for another Back to Basics video. And in this one, I want to talk about power weapons. Now, power weapons come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Um, and I think, to be fair, it's where we generally all start to experiment uh, with painting different techniques and unusual things. Uh, so it's gonna be a fun video, hopefully. We're gonna have a quick chat about painting power weapons. Then I'm going to do an actual tutorial on how I paint my Space Wolves lightning power weapon effects. Um, I've had a few requests for that, so I thought I'd include that in this video. Now, as always, the video is aimed for beginners, uh, so I hope you enjoy it, and uh, let's have a look at power weapons. Okay, so let's talk about power weapons. Now, I actually use the word power weapons rather loosely, to be fair. Uh, what we're talking about is any weapon which is slightly unusual, slightly special, let's say, compared to your normal weapons. So, obviously, a power weapon um, is obviously more special than, say, a standard sword, a normal close combat weapon, because it's got better stats. And uh, it's always good to indicate that on your model. Um, now, the reason for that is it's just visually easier to see so when you've got a squad of 10 men you've got a blue sword for example in that squad you can easily see which one's got the power weapon and which one hasn't uh, not only yourself but obviously your opponent um, but uh, yeah not just power weapons that can be plasma guns power fists uh, wit blades you know anything which is a bit different which you think might be good to highlight it actually on your model um, as something a little bit special now, I'm going to show you a few of my uh, effects that I've done over the years. Now, I have to be fair, I haven't done a huge amount because um, I obviously play Necrons and Tyranids and they don't tend to have too many weapons like that. Uh, but in my Aldar and in my Space Wolves, I certainly have done uh, those. And I've done a few on commission works as well. Now, the key thing really here is to have fun uh, with your power weapons, with your power effects. Uh, because... As I said at the beginning on the introduction, this is probably the first time you're going to actually um, go outside of the box as such when it comes to painting. Make up something because uh, power effects, power weapons, can they can look like anything. Anything that you can envision. It could just be uh, an unusual colour of sword, let's just say a red sword. Um, so all your swords will be silver and then your power weapons could be red. Uh, just something very simple as that and of course you can go all out and do different effects so i'm just going to show you a few as i said in my previous ones now some of these you may have already seen we've got this one which is my avatar spear and this has got obviously sort of almost heat like molten effects pretty cool would work very well to stand out as some form of power weapon we've then got sort of a more traditional one this is my Exarch for my elder, and he has all this sort of uh, power effect where it goes from light blue to dark blue on the opposite edges of the blades. This is one of my very early swords, to be fair. It's not the greatest one in the world, but it does work. And I think that's the thing as well. It doesn't really have to necessarily look amazing, your power swords. Uh, they just have to look different because who's to say what a power sword actually looks like? like it could look like anything. Just something which stands out from the rest of your army, really. Uh, so that's that one. Then I've got uh, this guy with his power axe. Just there. And then we're going to do some similar effects in a minute on the sword on that guy. Um, and of course he's got his plasma. little plasma pistol. And again, I've done the blue effects on the, the plasma. One of the key things when doing sort of power weapons is to have... A theme for your army so effectively you'll be painting the same for all of your power weapons um, so you know unless you've got a really really special sword let's just say your HQ you know he's got a sword which no one else in the army has then yeah paint that different 
Um, but ideally, try to keep all your power weapons all looking the same throughout the army. It will make the army just look better. Um, it will make it clear to everyone that uh, what weapons they've got. Uh, so rather than having like a green power sword on one man and a blue power sword on another man, you know, unless they've got a special sword, something different, then um, it's worthwhile just keeping that same theme throughout the army. Um, and I could just go back to Aldar now, um, and my witch blades. So my witch blades, I've got this sort of gold to silver blend effect. I wanted something different because witch blades aren't actually power weapons, um, but they they are different to like a normal sword. So I wanted to indicate uh, that they were different, and that's sort of the design that I came up with. So all of my witch blades in my army all have this effect. So I think it works really well. It's pretty cool. So that's that one, and then finally, just going to show you the Space Wolf with his sword. Obviously, this is magnetized. So that is the sort of power weapon effects we're going to have a go at painting today. It's not actually lightning; it's just sort of like an energy effect, uh, trying to to go up and down the sword there. And of course, I've put that onto his claw as well just to keep the same theme that all of my power stuff is exactly the same as that. Now I've uh, also, I don't know if it's coming up on the camera or not, uh, but I've tried to make this power weapon a little bit frosty uh, because I wanted to uh, play this either as just a normal power weapon or also as a frost blade so I can pick and choose. Rather having two different weapons that had different effects, I went for one weapon that potentially could be both. So I did the power weapon effects on there and I also made it look a bit frosty so I could duplicate, uh, double up as a power weapon or a frost weapon. So that is a little chat about it. What we're going to do now is we are going to set up uh, to paint this sword. I'll do that on the camera so you can see me uh, doing that and we'll see what we can come up with. Okay, so I've got my wet palette, and uh, on the palette I've put, uh, as you can see, some various blues. Basically, I've got the base colour, uh, the medium uh, blue, a light blue, and some white. Uh, now, it's sort of irrelevant on the names. Um, I'm using Citadel paint, so you could probably work it out. But, um, yeah, effectively, you need three blues. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix these blues together, um, but I'm going to try and leave different colours um, as such. So just uh, clean my brush. Now I'm going to make these, mix these together like so. So effectively I've made those colours into five colours. So I've got the base and I've got this medium colour just in this area. And then this colour just here. There we go, and then the light blue. So I've got uh, a mixture of blues to work with. I'm going to leave the white uh, where it is because um, I, I need some pure white at the end um, and I don't need it to be any lighter than this. So let's get uh, the model in. Okay, so I'm going to start off uh, down the bottom of that palette so that some of the darker blues um, and I'm going to use my size zero brush for this. Now, the way that I do my uh, power weapon effects is I like to have two power points as such. Uh, so usually at the top of the sword and at the bottom of the sword, that's where I'm going to have the, the lighter colours. And I find that gives it quite a nice effect without it actually looking like lightning as such. Because uh, if you start at the top, say, and you go down into a lighter sort of effect, uh, that tends to look more like lightning. And I was trying to get away from that. I wanted more more sort of a power effect. So yeah, starts off down in that um, bottom area, not the base coat, so I'm just working slightly up from that. If you go in with the base coat, it doesn't really have too much effect. So first of all, um, I know this top area here is gonna be quite light, it's gonna be almost white, so I'm just gonna paint that whole tip, and then I'm gonna paint the whole tip just down at the bottom. So just in this area here, this will all eventually be white. Now there is a possibility that I might have to repaint the metal as I, I might possibly mess up uh, the sword. Uh, right, so we're going to do that and now we're going to paint some little lines coming down. Now this can be really random um, and we're going to build up these lines 
as much as we can as we go. So let's just start off with just almost like a guideline, really. And you can sort of almost shake your ha your hand as you go down and draw these lines. It doesn't have to be too straight. So a jagged line would be fine. And you can splinter them off from each other as well. As I said, you're not necessarily looking for a fork effect, you know, um, but yeah. So, that's the first layer done. I'm going to turn it over, paint the other side as well while it's drying, and then we come back to the next stage. Okay, so that's dry, um, and just in case you didn't see the previous video where I base coated this sword, um, I basically base coated it in the Cantor blue, and then I gave it um, a black wash, so that's how I got to the, the original blue. Um, and this layer which I've just done is now dried, and to be fair you can probably hardly see it, um, although I can see it here um, in the real life, I don't know if he's picking it up on the camera. Um, but one reason why I don't go in with the Cantor blue as the base sort of first coat is because you can't really see it at all. So just uh, go up to the next level. Right, we can now go in with the, the mid-ranged colour, um, and I'm going to repaint that, uh, but I'm going to try and leave uh, the colour which we just painted, just uh, just there, just but basically, sort of in that area, so we can see the original colour that we've just done. So we're almost just building up the line. So again, we're going to start here, and we know this is all going to be quite bright um, in these areas. So just slap it on basically here, and then. We're going to find our little lines that we've just done, and I'm just going to just go in and redo them. Now one thing to remember with these effects that you're doing, usually as you're doing them they look dreadful. And it's not till you finish that actually look pretty good, so don't get too disheartened. Uh, just keep going, because I, I, I've noticed that, so I'm painting these effects and I'm thinking, my god, they look dreadful. Um, but in the end, when I finish, they actually look pretty cool. So yeah, don't give up. Just just keep going with them. Uh, just going around this area, just down here. And this this point you might see some areas where you think, well actually I could probably just add a little line there, it might look a little bit better. So, and then probably have one coming down to this little join, like so. So now we've really built up where we're going to have these little effects. Okay, so that's going to dry. I'm going to paint the other side as well, and then I'll be back with the next stage. So that's dry. Now we're going to go in with the next colour, um, which is one down from the uh, lightest blue. Um, and we're going to, again, use the same brush, and I'm basically going to paint pretty much what you've just seen me paint, except I'm going to try and leave the colours that we've already painted showing on the actual lightning itself. Not so much these bottom bits, because once again these are going to be sort of going to white. So I'm just going to paint these bottom bits, bits first. Like so. Now I'm going to go in and do the power. So again, you can do Sort of form. This is where you don't mind having a shaky hand. Try and do a little shaky, wiggly line and try and leave those colours that you've already painted just showing a little bit, just on the outside of the edge. Probably about the only time that you want to have a shaky hand. come down this section here. So try to make this as random as you can. Now I'm just gonna sort of take those two lines that meet the bottom and I'm just going to sort of just blend them in a bit, make them a bit stronger, because we know this is going to be a lighter area. And I'm going to do that with the top. 
Now at the moment that top's looking not probably quite as good because it's only got one line coming down from the power and I think I want to make more than one so I'm now just going to go in and just, just add a little line there just to finish it off and have a little offshoot just there. And the different blues really help make the effect sort of change. Okay, and I'm just going to start to do the edges now. So what I'm going to do with this colour is I'm going to just paint the edge of this sword. This will help bring in all of those little lightning effects. I'm just using the side of my brush here, just running along the edge of this sword. Do that on the other side. There's no point going in with the base colours and doing this because you're going to literally cover it up with this light colour. So, yeah, just use this lighter colour. And we've obviously got one more blue to go and then white. Okay, so it's starting to take shape now. Uh, so, I'm going to paint the other side, let that dry, and we will be back. Okay, so that's dry. So, now we're going to go in with the uh, lightest blue colour that we've got on here. Um, and we're going to effectively paint the two tips or the two ends and then I'm going to put a very small thin little wiggly line um, on the, the effects that we've already done again trying to leave the colours that we've already painted just on the outside edges so uh, very carefully just paint in a little squiggly line just in the middle now this can be sort of quite random, it can be almost jumping on and off the sword um, as you do it. It doesn't necessarily have to be all over, like one big line. Just come down here. I'm probably not going to talk too much because I will need to concentrate. making it a bit thicker at the bottom here where obviously this is all going to be a bit lighter and I'm going to go back up to the top in a second just finish this piece and go back to the top and then just blend through well not blend but just don't like make this section here just a bit lighter just to indicate this is where the energy is coming from okay and then again I'm going to use this light colour but not down the whole of the sword here I'm probably just going to use it at this top area and then just drag it down a bit just to indicate that the top and then the bottom is where the energy is coming from so I just go up but leave that area in the middle, just that slightly darker blue that we painted last time. So again at the top, bring it down a bit and at the bottom and bring it up. Okay, looking pretty good. Uh, let that dry and we'll do the next step. Okay, so that's dry, so we're now going to go in with pure white. Uh, so once again, I'm, I've got my white on the palette here. Um, it's not particularly thick, obviously I've watered down all of these paints a little bit. Uh, so again, I'm going to start off on the tips. I'm just going to paint white on the tips here. And then I'm going to paint white at the bottom here. Just uh, I'm going to do the whole of the tip, just the, just the outer area. A bit too much paint on there. For now, just sort of set where that's going to be. I'm now going to paint the lines once again, uh, but this time um, I'm going to do very thin little lines, uh, just almost random patterns as well. So I'm not going to paint the whole of these lines. However, I'm going to start at the top because we know that's where the energy is coming from. 
So I'm going to start here. This is where we want a slightly thicker line. Again, wiggly. Try and leave the colours we've already painted just on the outsides. And then just wiggle that down very thin if you can. He says as he splodges it on. That's okay because we want different um, sort of thicknesses, I suppose, as such, um, of this colour because we want it to be really random. As we come down into the bottom, just go a little bit thicker on the bottom. I'm going to build these colours up. As I said, this we're probably looking at this and again, Nick, that looks dreadful. But it will, when it's finished, it will look pretty cool. I'm just building up this bottom section just because we know that's going to be the lighter area. Going back to the top, again I'm just going to make this nice and, and flat so it does actually look pure white and again just build that up into the original effect just so that it, uh, it looks nice and clean and crisp on that area. So again I'm going to put quite a bit of paint there and then I'm just going to spread it up into the lightning so it looks like that's where the actual effects are coming from. I've done quite well actually, I haven't got it on this metal section going down the sword here, I thought I'd probably have to retouch up that but done quite well so that's good. Okay so it's looking pretty good. What we're going to do now is the edges and again where this tip has got the most white I'm going to put the white on this area and I'm just going to spread it down almost just dry blending it through and then on the bottom and just blend it up like so and then on the other side get it in camera what you see here is a bean bag um, just lets me paint in this position, which I do find quite awkward, but uh, on camera, but it lets me paint in this position easier. Just taking the paint off and just smoothing it down, and then at the bottom. So I've just just made this up, this effect. Okay. So I'm going to paint this side now to make it look like this and then we'll be back with the next stage. Okay so that is done um, on both sides and uh, looking pretty cool and effectively you could just say that's finished, you know, power weapon effects was pretty decent. Um, however like I said with my um, Space Wolves I wanted to make my not only power weapon effects but I wanted to make more of a, a sort of frost effect. So what I did is I went in with a white glaze. Now this is where it gets interesting because you could glaze this with any colour in actual fact. Um, if you wanted to tone down the lightning effects you could potentially go in with um, a blue glaze, a very very thin blue glaze and that would just tone down those effects. Um, but like I said I wanted mine to look fairly frosty so I'm going to do a white glaze. So let's just show you how I'm going to do that. So first of all let's bring in my wet palette. Of course I've already got my white there, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of this uh, technical Laha medium, which is uh, basically a glazing um, aid. So let's get a few drops. Now the white is already pretty thin, to be fair, so I'm not going to necessarily need loads of this. I am going to add some. One, two drops. And I'm going to add a little bit of water as well. And just a couple of, well, probably not even two, just and go one drop of water will probably do, but let's just check. So I'm going to mix this together. I'm just going to drag it out. It looks pretty good. I'm going to do a little test now on my thumb. So I'm just going to take some of this and then put it on my thumb and see how it is. Now that's pretty thick to be fair. I think that's a bit too thick. So I'm just going to add another drop of water to that. Try that again. Ah, that's better. Okay, so it's a lot thinner now. Right, so we've got the consistency down, so let's get our model. Okay, what I'm going to do is get that glaze and I'm going to put it all over this. Now this can be scary because when you do it, it will just change the whole sword white, or it would appear to. As it dries, it will dry translucent and give quite a nice effect. So let's get this glaze. I'm gonna start with the actual white area and then I'm just gonna drag it up the sword. I haven't put any on there. Put some on here, drag it up the sword, like so, and just put a little bit more just on the tip just to make that a bit whiter. Now I'm going to do the same with the other side. Put some on, drag it up, and the same with this one here, and then put a little bit more on the tip. So, like I said, that's changed that to a pretty white colour. Uh, just make sure there's no misses. Okay, now we're going to let that dry. Right, there you go. So that is finished. Uh, that's all dry. Um, and uh, as I said, when the wash is dry, uh, the effects then start to come through. So I definitely have this like frosty feel to this sword. Uh, now, as you probably know, my um, guy here is going to be standing on a base with a dead Fenrisian wolf. Um, so, a little backstory, this guy has actually picked up a space wolf sword um, and he's chopped the head off the Fenrisian wolf. Um, and that is uh, why he's got a frosty sword. Now, as you can see, also I've painted the uh, plasma effects on the gun using the same palette except for white. I excluded white on there. Um, but yeah, looking pretty cool. So that's how he's looking. Let's just turn him around so you can see the other side of the sword. There you go. Okay, so I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching, as always. And uh, I shall see you in the next Back to Basics video coming next Saturday. Thanks for watching.